let's set the stage for the friends. So Her Herbert and I, and Amandrius as well, who's in here, um, has been playing Destiny since it was in beta in 2014. Um, and we have ebbed and flowed in our commitment, but we have never stopped playing outright. We have played every expansion. We have played every DLC. We have been critical. We have been, we have showered them in praise. Um, we joke uh, with Amon that, that this is, it's like our second job, right? And, and in some ways, like our, our digital avatars in this space are part of who we are. Right, and, and we mentioned this in a previous episode. Like when when those servers go down, it's like it is like a Horcrux, right? It's like a part of you will will wither away into the the nether sphere of ones and zeros. Um, and so a new DLC dropped, um, Beyond Light, and it I think for for Marcus and I and 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 Aman, everything's been great save for the weather. Um, Aman has some gripes about the dynamic weather systems in the game. Um, and we've had a lot of fun playing together and 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 leveling and and getting ready for the raid, which is, you know, if you're if you're unfamiliar for these with these kinds of like looter shooters or MMORPGs, a raid is is an enormous piece of of end game content that requires a great deal of coordination, a specific set of loadouts. Um, and in the case of Destiny, it requires six people to work together to beat what is, a, effectively a multi-phase puzzle and in, in a looter shooter like destiny you know there are all kinds of baddies shooting back at you and there are puzzles that you need to solve and there are time constraints um and all of it is in the hope of unlocking badass stuff to deck out your your player with your avatar with um new equipment with new perks and abilities that that will enhance the way you play and experience the game and as always with 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 much of of this um, it's also about bragging rights, and it's about you know putting finding more feathers to put in your cap um, as you move through the game and progress through the game. Um, and so the Deep Stone Crypt is the the latest raid, and it launched this weekend. Um, and as as has been the case for the last six years, um, the 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 opening weekend for a raid launches with a race to be the world's first team to clear the raid and that's that's a that's a that's an enormous badge of honor within the community um it offers um opportunities for those of us who don't partake in the race to learn about the mechanics and, and how to solve the puzzles in anticipation of our own attempts at the raid so the latest sauce mothman I'll, I'll defer to you here is about how challenging or not this latest raid is so There's there's a lot that I feel about this, and again, I, this is one of those topics that like I don't think anyone gives a shit about except for an avid Destiny player. Um, but what ended up happening was the raid race happened on Saturday. The raid opened at one, and a little under six hours later, it was cleared by the first team. Who won it, by the way? Uh, Clan Luminous. Not luminosity, but luminous. Um, some some guardians I've heard of before. I don't know the whole team though. Um, and then a uh, the first female ever to to come top five uh, was Deepstone Crypt. Um, Obk to Cat and her her squad were top five. Um, That's cool. So there today. As I was preparing dinner and trolling Twitter, there was a whole big ass tea spill that came from one of my favorite Destiny players of recent memory. He's very good. He's very popular. He's very funny. His team was also competing for Worlds First. Um, and by looking at the, the, the leaderboard, I don't think they came top 10 um, from what I remember. Now, Sub six hours is, is pretty good. The fastest clear of any raid or raid layer, which is a smaller version of this massive six player activity, was an hour and a half for a particularly small layer. The longest 
was the raid that we got two years ago, which took 18 hours for the first team to clear. 18 for the first team, which the entire community was waiting on because we were told that new things would be accessible once the first team cleared it. Yeah, they came in 33rd so it was like, 6 hours and 47 minutes. So it was a huge sort of like community thing to be like, we're dying for the first team to make it through because like we want to know what happens when they clear it. Now that we know to expect something. So this raid, we thought the same thing. We expected that when, when they cleared it, shit would open up and we'd be, you know, we'd be hyped about it. Come to find out today that said streamer, whose team came in, in the 30s, argued that they saw a lot of day one emblems that are given out if you clear it within the first 24 hours. And to be a little more explicit about this, in the first 24 hours, there is a power cap put into the game that will not allow you to be of a certain level. You can't be any higher than a certain number for each encounter. That's, that's an artificial handicap, right. friends. To make it at least feel as difficult as it should be from the offset. Um, and then that modifier gets removed. So if you beat it in that first 24 hours, you get a special emblem that says you did it in, special, in that time. And so everyone else in the game can see that you did that. This streamer started complaining that a lot of people seem to have this emblem. That a lot of people seem to clear the raid in the first 24 hours despite the power cap, despite it being new. And that that was emblematic of the fact that the raid was too easy. If it only took about six hours and a lot of people were clearing it, then it must be too easy. Needless to say, that sent a lot of people on a tizzy. And for good reason. For one, it's a knock against the game de developers to say you didn't make this hard enough why would you put out a raid that's not hard right second it's a knock on the other players right it has a very elitist flavor to it that suggests how is it that so many people that are not a top tier tens of thousands of subscribers streamer beating this on the first day there's no way that there can be that many good players. Now, from what I've seen on my Twitter feed, there are a lot of people who literally were in the 23rd hour and couldn't clear the final boss in time to get the emblem. There are a couple people I saw who literally beat it right after the day rolled. They were still in the encounter during reset and cleared it only minutes too late. My team and I didn't attempt the raid. We've actually never attempted a world's first. Um... Mm. Which, to me, is a little depressing. I want to try it one time. I know it's very stressful. I know Reese is not interested in the slightest. Um, for me, it's one of those things that like would be a huge achievement for me. Um, but I'm always content to do it whenever my, my clan is ready, whenever my friends are ready. And usually we do it in the first week. It's rare that we don't clear it in the first week. Yeah. And I'm also like one of those crazy players who's like, I've been raid ready since before it launched. Like, my... I was up to power. My guns were ready. My build was ready. I was like, I, you could throw me in and I will do my best right now. Um, but to have these complaints about like too many people clearing it ended up actually being mathematically someone looked at the statistics because they had them on hand. Only three and a half percent of the entire active player base cleared it in the first 24 hours. That's not that many people. It was like 5,000 teams of, of six. A little bit less, I think. That's really not that many people. Yep. And so it pissed me off, really, because I'm like, how can you not account for the fact that people have had more time to prep because the season went longer than it was supposed to. They've had more time to get acclimated to the systems. Their builds are pretty solid because not that much changed when this season rolled, right? We have war mind cells, which, you know, you don't have to know what those are, but anyone who's played the game knows that they are very powerful and they make lots of aspects of the game much easier. And so I'm not surprised that people were figuring it out and doing better. And, you know, when Reese and I were talking about this before the show started, in fact, like, the goal should be that a lot of people are getting through this. We should be, we should be hoping that players are consistently getting better at the game and actually clearing this on the first day or 
pretty close to the first day, right? Like it's it's not that it's not hard, right? And and you know we, we were debating this with with Aman earlier, right? Like I think that there could have certainly been another boss fight in there. I think it could be made just a little bit longer, not necessarily harder, but a little bit longer. Add a little extra oomph to it, right? The raid that took eighteen hours has what six encounters, seven encounters? It's an absurd number. Well, was um, it last, last wish? wish? Yeah. It, yeah, it's a long ass like, raid. It's, it's got a lot of stuff in it. I think I think it's, on our best day we do it we like it's still a ninety minute raid. Yeah, it it takes time if you like on our thing. best day. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not like a you know a quick, a quick thing, and so it felt really offensive. I feel like, yep. um, as as a player who would totally you know put my feet to the fire, to have someone be like, oh you're you you're not getting ten thousand subs a month like you shouldn't be beating a raid day one. It it feels really salty and elitist. Um, it doesn't change the fact that I I have complaints about the rate system, but like I I think that that's a really shitty mentality, for yeah. the ecosystem of a game like Destiny. Yeah, it's interesting that we that we started this with this question about like TikTokers and content producers and how they're changing like the landscape of like cultural production, um, because folks like Glad, as much as I like him, um. Like, I, I, I do think that there's a little bit of salt in, in terms of, like, Glad has the luxury as a street. Like, he makes a living off of Destiny, right? If, if he has mm -hmm. another job, right, like, great. But he makes a lot of money playing this game in front of other people. He has the luxury to be as prepared as possible for an event like this because it is functionally his job um and so i think that there's a little bit of like i put in all these hours how is it that like johnny cualquiera who plays after work not only is as prepared as i am but could achieve what i achieved and so i think that there's a little bit of salt there um about just like i the I, I sit in a tier above these other players and they shouldn't be able to touch me on an event like this. Um, but I, like, you know, and, and, and we spoke about this maybe in our first or second episode ever. Like, I think the beauty of games is that they're the only piece of art that can gatekeep you. They're the only piece of art that, say, that, that says you, you need to like open me to enjoy my depth, right? It's not like a painting that like the, the meanings might be foreclosed to you, but the painting is self-contained, mm -hmm. right? And you experience the painting all at once. Like a game can say no to you, right? Demand things of you in a way that, that, that a, a, a painting can't, which isn't to say that like paintings don't elicit things from us, that music doesn't elicit things from us. But games are fundamentally meant to be enjoyed. They're, they're meant to challenge us, but not to be inaccessible, right? This isn't Dark Souls. And I think, I wonder, and I said, this, excuse me, I said this when you, um, when you, when you were filling me in on the, on the tea, like, I think that so many, we want people to clear the raid. We want people to enjoy the top tier content. That keeps people coming back. That keeps the, the community invested. That means that there are more people who are more well versed at the game who can then take the neophytes and prepare them and teach them, right? And keep them in the fold, right? So often, Destiny, right? I, I think about like the Galar God era, right? It was if you didn't have Galarhorn, you like you were not a like right. LFG was like must have Galarhorn, mm -hmm. right? Do you remember that? Yeah. And then it became Sleeper, must have Sleeper. Um, and so it became this thing where, like, if you did not have this one piece of equipment, you fucking rookie, you weren't allowed to play. Even if playing was precisely what was going to give you greater chances at acquiring the things that were going to make you better at the game, more efficient at the game, more experienced at the game, right? Um, and it becomes this, like, bizarre thing, right, where, like, if you want to get better at running, well, you keep running, Right? If you want to become a better Destiny player, you have to play the more challenging content, but your, your siblings in the game are saying, no, fuck off. You don't have the, the, the doodads. Yep. And I think the other piece, too, is, you know, and, and I said as much to you, I'm a level 99 
S tier salt lord. And and you know Marcus is more willing to be gracious with Bungie, at times even a Bungie apologist, whereas like I will not be sated. But I can say from my salty throne that this is the best the game has ever been. The most healthy the game has ever been. Um it feels well paced, well designed, with the exception of the fucking hunts. That's the one thing that tilts me <laughs> right now is I want to do hunts with my friends, but that's that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> did you read a yeah. bond thing? And he's and he's right. It really was like Hunter that. Was yes. The desolate equivalent of a bachelor's degree and th three years of experience in and, the field. And yeah, people absolutely. are still like that. I mean, if we go on LFG right now, I'm sure there's gonna be people who are like must have five clears already, right? It's yeah, been, right. It's been two days but i guarantee you people are gonna like you must have the lament or you must have the raid rocket launcher and they're gonna be like yeah. otherwise you can't come with us and it's gonna be like well yeah. maybe if you help me clear it i might have either one of those things because i don't feel confident yeah. enough to do them on my own right right and so i think that you know frankly i i think that these first of all at three and a half percent right let's call it four four percent of the community cleared it Right, I mean, like, think, think. If, imagine if only four percent of the class passed the test. Think about mm -hmm. the curve you would have. Right, like, yeah. it's absurd. Four percent of the somehow... class passed the test on the first try. I'm gonna offer it again every week and see if the rest of you can do it. Like, right, like, I think it says a lot about the community that so many were willing to do this. Right, that so many felt prepared and compelled to participate in an event that, for in years prior, felt like an event for the elites. Yep. Right. We never went like it, it wasn't just it wasn't only that like some of us weren't ready yet. We didn't have the right equipment or the right power level. But it was also like I think we've understood like this is not for us. We are in in one or two tiers below them. We're in the hardcore, but not in the professional destiny community. Right. The people who make money off of the game and destiny has been so shitty. Right. Like it, it's it's highs are really high. When, like in moments like this, Destiny's the best game to play. Like I, dollars to donuts, there is no better, com more compelling game to play right now, right now. And chat, if you don't play Destiny, you should start playing Destiny. It's free to play. Everybody should play Destiny. I agree. It's the best game right now to play. When you have so many people showing up for for Worlds First, it speaks to the health of the game, mm -hmm. to the health of the community. When you have other worlds first, where the clear, where the where the percentage of clears is lower. I think it doesn't speak highly of the community, or the place that the game is in. What it says to me is that the game is right now catering to the niche and the hardcore, who are who are never going to leave, and that neophytes, regardless of ambition, are being held out, mm -hmm. are being kept at the margins. Content should be hard, right? Like if a game's too easy, I'm going to lose interest. I want to be challenged. I want to be stimulated. I want to feel like I'm solving things. Um, but difficulty for its own sake to create a cadre of elites who have X number of clears and a pleb tier that doesn't have any at all isn't salubrious for a game, especially when the proclivity is to say, well, if you're not already at the tier that I sit at, fuck off and die. Like, if Destiny wants to continue to grow, if Destiny wants to continue to be, like, the service game, right, to be for looter shooters what WoW is for digital D&D type games, it needs to fold people in. It needs to be more accessible. Like, six hours for a raid clear, uh -huh. to me, is, like, perfectly acceptable. It means it's hard. It means it's hard. It means that you have to clear your day to do this. Yeah. And we're talking about six hours for the best of us. There for the, were people the top tier plus. of us. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't think we're going to clear it in six hours on Saturday. I think we're going to take longer. We've, right, we haven't, we haven't raided in at least a month, right? Some of us have raid, like there's so many things that you have to mitigate, yep. right? Like on other raids, I, I know what my role is in uh, Zero Chief fights. 
I know what the splits are for certain encounters, right? Like in Golron, I know that I – or not Golron. Um, who's the bubbly bastard in Last Wish? Uh, Morgoth. In, in the Morgoth fight, like, I know that I'm a runner on the right side. No one needs to tell me that. No yep. one needs to explain to me my role. It's just like, all right, guys, these are the splits. And the only time we ever have to discuss it is when we have new people, right? When, when we're welcoming new raiders to, to our group. And so we're going to have rust. We're going to have to, like, figure stuff out, and it's going to take longer, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a lot of fun this weekend, um, and, and I'm confident we're going to get a clear. But to, to complain about six hours is just so ridiculous to me. And it's so antithetical to like building community, to having games be fun and accessible, um, to the longevity of the game. Destiny dies at the feet of the elites. 